So we're going to be reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 this morning. Finally, my brother. He's like a lot of preachers. He's to the finally. But he's going to call, he's keep talking for a while. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Is one more verse, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and we're not going to read any farther, but if you read down, there's more to it than verse, we're not going to read verse 18, but this is praying with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Amen. I'd like to preach to you for a little while this morning on just stand. Just stand. Would you pray with us right now in this room? Father, we come to you this morning in this place. You're holy. You're mighty. You're gracious. Everything is in your hands. We think it's in our hands, but really it's in your hands. Hallelujah. And so we come to you today. We submit ourselves unto you. We ask that you would speak to our hearts. Any spirit, human or devilish that would hinder or attempt to hinder, we bind in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for an opportunity to declare your word this morning in this house. And again, we give praise unto you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Can we one more time lift up our voice to God and praise in this place? Can we praise him one more time in this house? Can we magnify him one more time in this house? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be, you may be seated this morning. Amen. Uh, I was a little surprised when a friend of mine, uh, didn't know what happy feet were. Hallelujah. Happy feet. And, uh, in, in football vernacular, happy feet. And, uh, and so I had to explain happy feet to him. All right. Happy feet is what happens to a quarterback that drops back to pass. And he's supposed to be in what's called a pocket. Of course, if you're on defense, your, your goal is to, to, mess up the pocket, okay? And as he feels the pressure of those uh, defensive linemen, those 300-pound uh, muscle-bound guys that want to do everything but kill him, amen, he, he can get happy feet. It takes quite a bit of courage to stand there when you know after, when you pass that ball that somebody's going to label you. And you, you don't, unless you played football, you don't even understand what it means to get labeled. Hallelujah. Uh, one quarterback actually one time ended up with his spleen being ruptured during a football game. Amen. That's how hard they, they hit you. But the, but the object is to get you to have happy feet. Now, happy, what, you know, happy feet, your feet are moving around. You see a quarterback that can go back into the pocket and he can set himself and go through his rhythm. He's going to kill you. He's going to pass you silly. Hallelujah. And so, amen, once that quarterback has been hit a number of times and he starts thinking about the, the Demetrius's and the Calvins, uh, crashing in on him, uh, he is, he's got other things in mind other than just passing the ball. Hallelujah. It's to evade the rut. And therefore you scrambler and some guys scramble good, but, but ideally, your coach does not want you running around because when you start running around, anything has happened. Just ask the Chicago Bears. <laughs> All right, I offended half the crowd, and the other half didn't care. But 
happy feet. Yeah, go Bears. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so, uh, you know, your husband's rubbing off on you, sister. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, what a what offensive linemen are taught to do is to drop, you know, to drop back into their stance to again keep the uh, defensive lineman off. You know, what's this got to do? Just just hang on. All right. Their objective is, of course, to protect the quarterback and to give him an opportunity to pass. Hallelujah. I'm a buff of Civil War and World War II, and uh, I, uh, I, uh, I've been to multiple Civil War sites over many years. I've been to Shiloh, Gettysburg. I've been to Lookout Mountain. I've been by Missionary Ridge and other places uh, where battles were fought during the, the Civil War. During the Civil War, there was a man named, they called him Stonewall Jackson. He was, he was a general for the Rebs. Uh, I noticed I'm calling them Rebs today. Although my family is from Somerset, Kentucky, and they were probably all Rebs. Uh, I'm calling them Rebs. Amen. He was, he was a, a force in himself, and his men gained the reputation of being able to, I mean, stop a charge. Of the, of the Union soldiers. Now, uh, I'm just, I'm, just let me lay the foundation here. All right. Just hang out with me. In the North, there was an answer to that. The answer to that was the group that was called the Black Hats. The Black Hats were from Indiana, Wisconsin, and Michigan. All right. And they are, you know, they wore a black hat. Okay, and, and when the soldiers of uh, the rebellion would uh, see them, they knew that they were in for a fight. That these boys just didn't run. That these boys would stand under tremendous pressure. You gotta understand some, in, in the days of those, that fighting, gentlemen and ladies, Amen. They stood and they fired at one another. Okay. And many of the, the, the muskets were notoriously not real, not real good at, at, you know, unless you were up close. But you would fire your musket and then you would bend down and the guys behind you would fire theirs and then a lot of times there would be three lines. It, it took, I, I've been to Lookout Mountain, a ranger there told me it takes uh, 11 steps to, to get your musket ready to fire. And then I was at Shiloh and a ranger there told me it took seven steps. So seven or 11. Hey, that makes sense. If you go to the seven and 11. Amen. You had to, you had to swab out your, your, your barrel. You had to uh, make sure you, uh, you put the powder in and the ramrod and, and, or the, and the, the bullet or the mini ball and jam that baby in there. You had to put the cap in on the flint. Amen. Before you fired. And, and they say some of those fellows were so good at it that in, they can load their gun in three times in a minute, which is incredible, especially when you're under fire. Hallelujah. And, uh, <laughs> I remember a ranger saying to me one time that in the excitement of battle, there are people that forget to take their ramrod out of the barrel. Okay, and so they actually found one tree that had 17 to 18 ramrods buried into it, amen, where soldiers had fired, not realizing that they had not pulled the ramrod out. So it's, it is quite exciting, quite, quite fearful, amen, quite, the pressure is tremendous on you to, to fold, to retreat, to back up, but Amen. Every Reb knew if there's black hats in front of them that this is just not going to be a, a, a hill, a situation that we're going to take. That they have positioned themselves to fight. Praise God. You know, surprisingly, one of the one of the youngest soldiers of the Civil War was nine years old. Can you imagine? You got a nine-year-old son here today, nine years old. 
Amen. Little Johnny Clem had tried to join. You know, the, the age was supposed to be around 18, of course, who was checking. But amen, Johnny Clem tried to get in and said, no, nah, you got to go home, son. But he refused to go home, and he got picked up by some boys from Michigan. Amen. He became their mascot and their drummer. Now, a drummer was very important in battle. Amen. Because in a battle, you cannot hear your officer most of the time. The screams, the yells, the firing, uh, it becomes so loud that it is impossible for you to pick up on the commands of your officer. And so they would use these young drummer boys to give out the commands for either go forward, amen, go to the left, you know, meet here, amen, and they would begin to roll. The most exciting roll was the long drummer roll, which mean, which means attack. Hallelujah. Attack. And so when that roll began, it would go throughout the line, amen. It, one guy, one drummer would hear it, then another drummer would hear it, and they're all beating until all of them on that line are beating. Praise God. And they would charge. The same Johnny Clem, by the age of 12, was a sergeant in the Union Army. Uh, so uh, quite a unique time, amen, quite a time of uh, of warfare and again, uh, a time where men's hearts failed them for fear. Uh, a time when men actually became such noted people that others wanted to be with them. Hallelujah. So what are you, what are you, what are you, what are you bringing on this stuff up? I want you to know this morning that the believer's life is not a playground. It's a battlefield. And our battle today is not against other human beings. In fact, you are wasting your time if you are fighting people when you ought to be fighting devils. All right? You're wasting your time this morning. Amen. Because the devil seeks to control people and make them oppose the work of God. Now, for the believer this morning, prayer is that energy that enables the soldier to wear the armor and will the sword. Hallelujah. I cannot fight the battle in my own power, my own talent, my own strength. Amen. It will not matter in this battle. Amen. I must put on, as the scripture said, the whole armor of God. Amen. And when I've done all I know to do, I've got to stand. I have got to stand. Hallelujah. To stand. Everybody say stand this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether you realize it or not this morning, amen, all of us are involved in this battle. Amen. Some of us are on the front lines and we're wearing like the black hats today. We ain't a backing up. We're not going away. Hallelujah. In fact, I would to God this morning that when our enemy looked across the lines of those that come in God, they would say, ah, there's ASC out there. Oh my, are we in for a battle today? They're not going to run. Amen. They're going to fight. You know, we better buckle down or they're gonna, they're gonna destroy us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, brothers and sisters, we need men and women and young people today. Johnny Clem was nine years old and he went to battle. We need young people today that will get involved. Amen. In the kingdom of God. And I don't care how young you are, but when you begin to pray, amen, God hears you. God hears you when you begin to pray. And there's nothing like the sweet prayers of our young people who, quite frankly, don't have an agenda. I prayed with people and I knew good and well that they had an agenda and they were not even really praying to God. They were praying so that I would hear them. Amen. And that's not how it works this morning. Again, ladies and gentlemen. So when you've done all that you know to do, 
you're to stand. Position is everything. Preparation is everything. It is vital that we understand these things. We are not going through just some exercises today or any other day for that matter. But we are involved in warfare. Spiritual warfare. Our enemy is not a buffoon. Some people want to betray him as a buffoon. He is not a buffoon whatsoever. We are told in the scripture that his strategies, his wiles, amen, he has ability, amen, to do things. He has been able to deceive people's hearts in this house. He's been able to infiltrate the minds of people under the sound of my voice in this house. Your mind has become his playground. Your mind is confused and it's because of an enemy called the devil. Amen. Who will come against you again to destroy you. Amen. In the second Chronicles chapter 20, are you, are you with me this morning? Second Chronicles chapter 20, amen. Jehoshaphat knows that Mount Seir and Moab and, and the other fellows are coming against them to destroy them. And he's, he's crying out to God for an answer. And in second Chronicles 20 and verse 17, amen. They are told you will not need to fight in this battle. It says next position yourself. Everybody say, position yourself. It's time to get in order. Amen. In the Civil War, amen, the, the officer would go down the line with his sword. Amen. And he'd get everybody lined up. Why? Because you don't want any gaps in your line. You want everybody marching together. Amen. So they were to position themselves. Amen. Again, positioning is so important. Amen. You're not going to give them, if you please, your backside. This is not how we fight today. We don't turn our back upon the enemy. We don't sit down on the job. Amen. There are men, you'll read in the scripture, they are always seem to be sitting. That's not how you get the work done. Amen. You got to get involved. You got to be a part. Too many are spectators when you need to be right in the middle and the thick of things. Hallelujah. So they were told to position themselves and then they were told to stand still. Stand still. Now I know in this room there are people that they would do this. They would be out there looking at the enemy today and they start counting. And they'd count, and they'd count, and they'd count, and they'd count. And the more they count, the greater their fear becomes. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. When you position yourself, you are not positioning yourself to count the enemy. What promotes fear? When you think it's all up to you to win the battle, that's what promotes fear. If you're going to do something for God and you're dealing with fear, your fear is rooted in the inabilities that you have. And when you position yourself, amen, you must look to God. I'm going to look to God. From where comes my help? My help comes from the one who made the heavens and the earth. And so if you are struggling today with fear to do the work of the God, it is primarily based upon you thinking it's all about you having to win the victory. So stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. The Bible tells us in Psalms 25 and verse 14, the secret of the Lord is with those who fear Him. And He will show them His covenant. So when I go into battle, it's not my job to be filled with fear and to fear the enemy. 
My job is to have a reverence for my God. Hallelujah. I want you to know, I want you to know this morning, hear me. When you go to war in the kingdom of God, you need to follow the instructions of your commander. He's going to tell you what to do. I will not go through all the d- details of Second Chronicles chapter 20, but I can tell you this morning that God instructed them to stand. God instructed them to praise and to sing. And God told them that he was going to give them the victory. How, oh, when are we going to get it through our heads today? When are we going to understand that the battle is not ours, but it's the Lord? Every time you sit down to teach a Bible study, every time you go into the house of corrections and sit down with men and women that do not know God, it's not your battle, it's God's battle. You're just in His, amen, on His side and serving Him. You need to position yourself. Hallelujah. Stand still. Stand still. Praise God. It was Shama in 2 Samuel 23 who was sick and tired of the enemy. The Philistines just doing a number on the Israelites. And when they gathered their troops together, amen, they gathered their troops together where there was a field of lentils, piece of ground. And the people began to flee, but not Shammah. In verse 12 of chapter 23 of 2 Samuel, the Bible says he stationed himself in the middle of the field to defend it. Oh, where are the men and women that are not going to run? Where are the men and women that said enough is enough? Where are the men and women and the young people who will say, amen, I am not moving from this field. This is as far back as I'm going to go. Amen. To go any farther would be distrustful of my God. To go any farther, we started this thing off this morning talking about the glory of God. To back up, to run, does not bring glory to my God. And I refuse. I'm going to defend the field. It's important how you position yourself. It is important, ladies and gentlemen, how you position yourself. I, I, I'm just, I'm going to be ugly. Here comes ugly. Our fighting is not, of course, done with a fist. It's not done with a gun. One of our weapons, one of our most powerful weapons is prayer. There are many people under the sound of my voice today that your children are not serving God. It is time for you to position yourself. Not get in the background where you're not going to get shot at. But get right on the front line and position yourself. It's time, if you please, baseball vernacular, step up to the plate. It's time to do more than talk about the fact that your children are not serving God. It's time to position yourself. It's time to stand still and say, I am not backing up another inch. Do you not understand the old, the old saying, you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. Once you get happy feet, you're going to keep backing up. And then what's going to come over you is the urge to run. And you're going to be running the wrong direction. I'm trying to tell you this morning, you need to stand. Just Stand. Just stand. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Wait for the commands of our leader. 
The Lord of hosts. The battle is his battle. Hallelujah. We gotta stand. We gotta stand. Hallelujah. We gotta stand. Praise God. I am encouraged by those I saw even signing up to prayer. I'm not, not trying to minimize you in any degree, but the more we gather together in prayer, the more that's going to take place. Amen. I fully understand that not everybody is what we call a good prayer. Amen. I mean, they're not the ones that get to hold the mic. My God, if you gave them a mic to pray, they'd freeze up. We're not asking you to be a mic carrier. We're asking you just to position yourself to fight. To fight. I don't think there's a man in this house that if somebody broke into their house this evening, amen, and that man was between or trying to get to his family, I don't think we'd all just sit down in our lazy boy chair and say, have at it. I think we do anything we, I think we get a hold of anything we could get a hold of. And in some houses, they would be dodging bullets. I'm just, just telling you. Hallelujah. You think, you think I'm fooling? Amen. You think, you know, but I'm here to tell you there are men in this room right now. They may be calm, sedate as it seems, but you put them into a corner. It's Katie bar the door because they're coming out fighting. And they're going to fight you until there's no more breath left in their body. I'm not trying to be boastful. I'm just telling you, amen, when you understand the value and what you are fighting for, it brings some things out of you that when you're playing pinochle, you really don't care if you win or lose. So just stand. Put your equipment on and just stand. You you do believe there's a heaven, don't you? Well, if you believe there's a heaven, there there is a hell. And not everybody's, you know, surprisingly, those that tell us that everybody's going to heaven, they're, they're not really reading the scripture. I don't care if he's a preacher. I don't care what he's got behind his name. Amen. The Word of God teaches that there is a a heaven to go to and a hell to shun. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, people begin to understand that when they come into a red-hot atmosphere where people have positioned themselves to stand. And they're crying out to God. Amen. And something begins to happen down on the inside of that individual. Hallelujah. 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 Can you give me about another 15 minutes? Hallelujah. That's why I sort of said, Cinda, we'll wait. It was a great day for Israel. When that 10th plague had hit Egypt and the cry was heard over all of Egypt, such a cry as it had never been heard before. And now they're saying, get out of here, Israel. Leave. Leave this house. And the Bible will tell us that they left out with boldness. Amen. They weren't trying to hover, cover their tracks. They just, they went out with boldness. Hallelujah. Goodbye, Egypt. Goodbye, sin. Goodbye, bondage. Goodbye, deliver, uh, weakness. We're going out boldness hallelujah but you see god was going to teach them some things because humanity has the tendency to be very boastful you know especially if they've never been in the situation they shoot their mouth out now they tell you how you should have done it and they've never faced it themselves If you're that kind of person, you know what happens when you talk to me? It goes in one ear and out the other. I'm just being honest with you. Amen. If I don't see any battle scars on you, and you want to pretend to tell me how I should do it, 
when you come to me all bandaged up and you've been nicked quite a few times, then we can sit down and talk. But if your uniform is clean and it doesn't have any dirt on it, no blood stains on it, why don't you go back and sit on the bench? All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm I'm back now. I'm back. All right, this, I'm calming down. They tell me, I, and this is not frustration talking today. I'm not wounded today. Okay, so that, I'm not wounded trying to wound somebody else here. I, I'm, I'm fine. Amen. I'm just fine. I really am. God is good. Hallelujah. And so they went out with a bold hand. They were excited. They were talking already about what Moses had been talking about, about that lamb flowing with milk and honey. Man, this is going to be great stuff, man. And so they're led out there. Of course, most of them don't know the direction they're going. Hallelujah. Now, if you read the Bible carefully, you will see that God did not take them by direct route into Canaan, that he went the long way around. And the reason he went the long way around, because they were, quite frankly, not ready for battle. And so he didn't want them to get into a situation where they get beat up so bad that they're ready to go back to Egypt and just cower and be slaves the rest of their lives. Oh, no, that's not what God wants to raise up today. No matter how many times you've been beat down, no matter how many times the enemy has done a number on you, when you make up your mind to serve God, hallelujah, hallelujah, it makes a difference, an entire difference. You cannot serve God and mammon. You can't sit on the fence. If I was just a room of men, I'd tell you what happens when you sit on the fence. And so they're excited. Excited. Hallelujah. And they get out there and they're following the leading of Moses. And by the way, the pillar of, pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire, God's taken them this direction. And uh, all of a sudden in front of them is a Red Sea. Okay, I'm sure by that time there are people saying, I think Moses is directionally challenged. He forgot to bring his GPS with him. Oh, no, he had GPS. It was right over his head. Hallelujah. And about, oh, somewhere in the afternoon, somebody looks behind, and they see a massive cloud of dust. Now, they're not, they're not stupid. They know what this means. Somebody's coming up behind. And they watch as that cloud of dust gets larger and larger and larger. In fact, if you've ever been around horses that run or you ever heard a horse charge, they, when they begin to run together, amen, the ground literally begins to shake. Hallelujah. And perhaps some of those people begin to feel the vibration in the ground. And they could hear iron chariots, the wheels hitting against stones. And amen. In other words, pressure is now mounting. Amen. This is no picnic. Amen. They have known the sword. They have known the whip. They have known the anger of Egypt. And, And now their mind is beginning to reflect on those things. Hallelujah. It's beginning to say things to them. Amen. It's beginning to talk to them. Hallelujah. It's beginning to tell them that you're going back into slavery. If you survive, you're going to go back into slavery. Amen. You can't defeat them. They are a war machine. They will chew you up. They will do a number on you like you wouldn't believe. Amen. You thought God was going to set you free. He was just fooling you. Amen. You thought you would have victory. Oh, that was just a fantasy. It was an illusion. You you know how the enemy works. You know how he messes with your mind. You know what kind of junk he says to every last one of us. And the problem is many times we begin to agree with the enemy. 
When all you got is gripes, you have fallen into the enemy's camp. And you're speaking what the enemy is speaking. And so, there they are milling around. They're not moving forward. They're not moving back. Left to the riders' mountains. And now people begin, you can hear the ground swell as it begins to be chanted by not one or two, but by thousands. Because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us out of Egypt? These were just people that had been shouting just recently. These were people who had cried out to God because of their bitter bondage. But now they're simply speaking what the enemy speaks. And they would say to Moses, Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt? Saying, Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Now don't sit out there on your high horse and think you ain't never said anything like that. Don't, don't give me, don't give me your smoke screen. Don't blow your smoke in my face. You know, you know how to shout when the sun's shining. Where are you when all hell's breaking loose? Where are you when you're under such a heavy artillery fire that you're just trying to keep your mind? This is what they begin to say to Moses. And now Moses, he's in a quandary. They've been excited. God has demonstrated Himself multiple times. He has told them who He is. He's given them His name. He has set them free from those that had oppressed and kept them in bondage. But that bondage is drawn close now. It's back. It's back. Some of you, God set free. But coming up on your heels right now is that same bondage that He set you free from. And you got a choice to make. Well, you can submit to the enemy, but I'm telling you for, don't you think for a moment that He is not going to vent His anger on you. That if you survive the venting of his anger, don't think for a moment that it's going to somehow be just like it used to be. Have you ever heard of the scripture when the house is clean and the devils are cast out? Amen. And that devil will go out and find seven worse than himself and bring them back to your house. I'm gonna, some of you are there right now. You clean the house. You started living for God. But then you backed up. And there was a knock on your door one day. And it wasn't Jesus. And he just pushed his way into your house. And he's running a number on your head right now. He's tattooing you every day, pounding on you. And you're sitting there like some helpless one who can absolutely do nothing. You are paralyzed by fear. In fact, you don't even understand how dangerous the situation you are in. You have somehow convinced yourself that somewhere down the road it's all going to change. Can I give you a word this morning? 
the very first thing that Moses said to these people was, do not be afraid. Fear has gripped you. Fear has taken a hold of you. Amen. It has done such a number on you. Amen. You are standing there in disarray because of fear. And it's just pounding you silly today. Now you can blame me for all your problems. You can blame me, amen, that I aggravate you in this house and all that. But you, you better, you better really find out who your enemy is. You better find out who your enemy is. I am not your enemy. All right? And so Moses says, do not be afraid. You see, again, fear is steeped in the fact that I do not have the ability to overcome this situation. And so what do we do? We go to the couch. We go to medication. We go to medication. Medication to help us sleep at night. Medication to calm us through our day. Medication just to medicate us. And inside, we're filled with fear. All right? We're milling around. We're not in position. Amen. What are we going to do? What's going to happen? You know, you know what people have a tendency to do? They find people that agree with their position. All right? I do. If so, somebody else has got it going bad. Man, they'll gravitate to them, and so they got two bad ones going on. And, and, and you know what we do as human beings. My God, if my, my story, Leo, you're telling your sad story. Well, then I gotta, I gotta tell you my sad story. But somehow my sad story is always bigger and better than your sad story. Till you come back later with another sad story. And it does absolutely nothing to clear the air. It does absolutely nothing. To get my head on right. That's why there's a thing called time out. Time outs is supposed to help us get our head on right. Time outs is a coach is going to just look at us. Not say it. He just look at us, man. And we know everything he's been talking to us for weeks and months is going through our mind. My God. And we know what we should have done and did not do. Don't be afraid. We got to get it under control. You got to get it under control. You got to get it under control. You cannot let fear rule you. You cannot let fear tell you how things are going to happen. You cannot do that. Oh my God. I'm, I'm just, I, I said 15 minutes and 15 minutes have quickly passed. Where have I been doing in all this time here? Oh, hallelujah. You cannot let fear control you. Let me tell you, fear will destroy you. Fear will paralyze you. Fear will cause you to run. Fear will put a yellow stripe up your back. Fear will make you a bigger target for the enemy. So Moses says, do not be afraid. But he doesn't stop there. The next command he gives to them is stand Still. Stop. Stand still. Just stand still. Why? Because we need to set ourselves. We need to get ready. The attack is coming. We need to face the enemy. Hallelujah. And look him in the eye. And say, bring it on. Because there's only one way I'm leaving this battle. Either I'm going to leave it on my feet or I'm going to leave it. You carry me on the shield. That's the only way I'm leaving this field. You, you, oh my God. You see, I was raised with people that were hardened soldiers of Jesus Christ. I'm very concerned about this generation. Amen. How, how easy it was, how easy it is. You know, you know, I'm sorry, folks. I do read your Facebook page. I, I do read your texts. 
Amen. I never, re- I never comment this. I am commenting right now and, and I hear your fears through what you text and what you put on Facebook. It does not propagate victory. It speaks other things. I am telling you today to stand still. Let your officers come through the ranks and say, okay, hey, my my brother, you've been hit pretty hard, but you can do it, man. Just stand right here. Amen. Okay. Hey, hey, John, you go stand next to him because he needs some extra support in this part of the battle. Yeah. Hey, 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 would you go get his back? Amen. We're going to position ourselves. Amen. That's what he's saying. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. Hallelujah. You see, you can't hear when you got happy feet. You can't hear when you're looking for an escape hatch. Looking for the way out. You can't, you can't hear. The only thing that you can focus on at that moment is your fear is consuming you and you have got to get away. Stand still. Why? Because you're fixing to get some instruction. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. If you're not standing still, you're not going to hear the instructions. If your mouth is going, and some of you, that's all you do is your mouth goes all the time. Oh, I I am preaching, brother. You know, he gave you two ears and one mouth. Figure that out. Well, pastor, be my, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm past one word for you. Tough. You see, what God wants us to learn to do is to listen. What's he say to the church in Revelation? Amen. He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you got happy feet, if you're milling around, if you're talking, you are not going to hear and you're going to miss the command that comes down and you're going to be asking the guy next to you, what did he say? And the guy next to you is strapping on his, amen, his armor. He's saying, we're going. Amen. Where are we going? Amen. And about that time, he's ready to use his own sword on your backside. Or maybe on the top of your head because that may help you there. All right, I'm back. I'm back. I'm not frustrated. I'm not trying to offend anybody today. Amen. I'm just, I'm just being plain. All right. Can I be plain? I, I can, I can give you a nice little sermonettes. They might do that at funerals. Well, this ain't a funeral. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand still. Why? Because everything is going to change. Do you know what, do you know what Moses said next? Hold your Peace. In other words, he is telling you to be still or shut up. Yeah. He has told us not to fear. He has told us to stand still. And now he's telling us to hold our peace or shut up. The psalmist would say, be still and know that I am God. And I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, when I'm still, I just may hear something from the Master. Or I may catch a word of another believer as they say, you know what God said. You know, and then I begin to repeat what God said to them. Hallelujah. And I tell the next guy next to me, hey, buddy. We're going to win this one. I got some inside information for you. This is our battle. 
Do you know God has just set this whole thing up to take care of our enemy? Do you understand? That's exactly what he was doing. The whole thing was set up to destroy the Egyptian army. You know, when Job was arguing with his friends about how righteous he was, and Elihu came to him. In Job 37 and 14, Elihu said to him, Listen to this, O Job. Stand still and consider us Consider the wondrous works of God. You've been fussing about how righteous you are. Why don't you get off that focus and start focusing on God? How great our God is. Hold your peace. Hold your peace. So he told them, amen, he told them again to not be afraid, to stand still, position yourself. And then he He told them to hold their peace, but he wasn't done. He also said to them, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. And while he's telling them to go forward, God is at work. The cloud of God has now become darkness to the Pharaoh's army. And light to the children of Israel. I can just picture those Israelites in the back. And they can hear the sound of horses. And hear chariots, you know, the the metal on the metal. And it's, my God, they're close to us. Wow. I thought I heard a horse snort. They're close to us. But they can't find us. They're in darkness. I'm in light. What's the marching orders? Forward, forward, forward. Hallelujah. Listen to Psalm 77, all right? Verse 16 through 20. You see, if you really want to get a song, you're going to get it through the battle. Many songs that we sung or have sung are songs that people have wrote Because of battle. Because of their experiences. You know, and they write songs about how good God has been. Look what it says. The water saw you, O God. I'm talking about the Red Sea. The water saw you, O God. The water saw you. They were afraid. The depths also trembled. The clouds poured out water and the sky sent out a sound. Your arrows also flashed about. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. The lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea. Oh, you're missing it. Your way was in the sea. That's, that's the way. Wait a minute, there's a wall there. No, no, your way is in the sea. Your path in the great waters. And your footsteps were not known. Hallelujah. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Hallelujah. You just need to stand. I'm telling somebody, you need to stand. Just stand. Just stand and see the salvation of the Lord. Just stand to hear His instructions. Just stand. Shut your mouth. Because what's coming out of your mouth is not glorifying God. And you don't want to not glorify your God. You are saying things that dishonor Him. You are saying things that can infiltrate the consciousness of other believers and cause them to become fearful and cause them to question what's going on. Amen. Do you understand? That's just exactly how it works. So don't be afraid. Stand still. Be still. Go forward. That's where we are today in this room. That's where we are in this room this morning. Just stand. Stand having on the armor. Just stand. When you, when you've done all you know to do, just stand.
this way. I, I, I am coming to a close. When Paul chose to use Roman armor as an identification of the warfare that the believer goes through. You, most of us do not understand how brutal warfare was. The warfare that you read about in, in history, American warfare recently, it's long distance for most of it. Okay. But the warfare of those days was hand to hand. There was nothing to protect your back. Nothing. The only, only thing that protected your back is your brother who would stand behind you. When you were in the Roman legions, and believe me, all the time that they fought, they were outnumbered. When you were in the Roman legions, never get a chance to read Con, Con and Glugan. He's an English author, writes historical fiction, and he depicts the warfare of the Romans. When you see that horde coming at you, and it is a horde, screaming and screeching, they sound like a bunch of devils. Amen. They're coming to break you. You know there, you know there's going to be a collision. There's no doubt about it. There is going to be a collision. What do you do? You stand still. You just stand still. And in the Roman legion, when the front line stood still, the line right behind him came up right with him and braced them because they knew there was going to be a hit. And then there would be like a wave just crashing over them and they're trying to break through their lines and men are screaming and men are falling. And you just stand in there and then the order comes go forward and you start marching and your enemy is milling around because see he's disorganized now he's lost the impetus of of the momentum of his charge and he doesn't know what to do and so he's milling around in confusion what are you doing you just keep going forward one step at a time one step you just move in unison in unison you move in unison. Ain't nobody getting out in front. You are, you got your arm right next to you is the man that's fought with you through many battles. And on this side is a man that you have trained in to be a, a fighter. Amen. And you just move in unison. Hallelujah. And this is going to be brutal what I'm going to say. And every Roman soldier, amen, when he fought, he did not swing for your head. He tried to hamstring you. Because once you're on the ground, you're dead. And so they would hamstring their enemies. And they go down and their bodies laying there and you're just walking over them. And every one of your buddies behind you, every line has got a sword out. And they are stabbing that fallen enemy. And they're wetting their sword. It's brutal. It's almost like a machine at work. And they move forward. They were the fear of that world when a well-trained Roman army showed up on the scene. You had to have some guts to stand against them. Understand? Brothers and sisters, we're in training camp right now. So you need to get rid of your fear. You need to stand still. You need to position yourself. You need to get rid of everything that is negative that comes out of your mouth. No matter how valid you think it may be, you are not going to talk negative. You understand that's not how you fight. Amen. I'm not going to tear down my brother. I'm not going to tear down my sister. Amen. I'm going to encourage them. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're going to stand. Why? Because we're waiting for that order to go forward. And then when we go forward, it says unison moving. My God, if you ever read about the Civil War, amen, all those engagements, man, it was just 
I admire those men. My God, I don't think I could have stood under the onslaught of all those mini balls coming at me. Amen. After I fired my gun, my my desire would be run. Hallelujah. No, son, load again. Load again. Load again. Why? Because the next one's going to take them down. Perhaps that's where some of you are right now. You just need to stand and load your weapon again. Mm. Oh my God. My God, I got to stop. I got to stop. When you've done all you know to do, stand. Stand. Stand against his wiles. Stand against all his strategies. Do not back up. For one moment, do not back up. Stand. Stand. Even when you feel the pressure to back up, do not back up. Stand. Hold your ground. Why? Because the command's going to come down soon and it's going to be forward. Hallelujah. Can we bow our heads in this room this morning? Can we bow our heads. God, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Sisters. For how many times have I told you that I am with you? That this battle is not yours. It is my place. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise him for that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hearing the Lord's word today. Thank you, Jesus. As pastor spoke, he says, position yourself. Stand still. The word says, see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what was just spoken to us. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. So thankful that God is in the midst of chaos. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Before I pray for a couple people, and we may have more that need some prayer today in their bodies and uh, things that they're going through. As I was in prayer during this week, God was just letting me know that the joy of the Lord a lot of times is not just I'm feeling happy today because something good happened to me. So I'm going to feel happy. Joy is not just the Lord's joy is not just the happiness. Now I feel happy. The Lord's joy is sustaining. Gets us through what we're going through. Hallelujah, Lord. And these are just exactly what the Lord told me. Hallelujah. So the true joy of the Lord says no matter what my circumstance, I will stand for the word of God, no matter what I'm going through today, no matter what may be said against me in Jesus name, I will go press forward in the Lord's work. Hallelujah. Not turning back, not turning around from the battle that's ahead. Hallelujah. The true joy of the Lord says, no matter the chaos, I will stretch farther in God. Hallelujah. Lord God, the joy of the Lord is sustaining us. It will get us through. Hallelujah. Lord, I feel the burden. I feel that that is what people are going through, that we don't feel like we can take what's being thrown at us. Hallelujah. Lord God, but God sustains us. Hallelujah. Jesus. That is his word. He says, 
I am with you. I will not forsake you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. I'm just going to pick up that black hat. Knowing, knowing that God sees us and he will get us through. Hallelujah, Lord God. I don't care what may come against, right? We don't care what may come against because we know that God has the victory in the end anyway. (laughs) Oh, how the devil may try. He may try to stir up the chaos in our home. He may try to stir up the chaos in our work. He may try to stir up the chaos between husbands and wives. Hallelujah. He may stir up confusion between our children and parents. Hallelujah. But we know the Lord is on our side. There's reconciliation in the house. Hallelujah, Lord God. There's restoration in the house because the Lord knows what we're going through. Hallelujah, Lord. And those that have been praying, not just because you hear and know about it, but the Lord knows who's been praying and the Lord gives those who have been praying revelation of what others are feeling and going through. Hallelujah, Lord God. I'm so thankful for our brothers and sisters today who know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for a pastor being so sensitive to the spirit of God. It is a battle that we go through. It is a battle that we face every day. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we cannot turn away from it. We cannot fear. We cannot get anxiety, Lord God, overtaking us. We need to go forward. Has God not brought us through things before? And he sees us through again. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. The burden may be great, but but God knows. He knows. 